This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 175 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, I am talking with Burnell Westbrook, and we're going to be diving into what is personal branding. This has become so much more needed and necessary for you to understand as we see more and more people making the leap to grow their online presence, whether it is through social media, creating a blog, trying to become an influencer, whatever it might be. So in order to truly stand out, the best way to do this is to create a personal brand. And Burnell is going to walk us through that. Now, what you're also going to hear us talking about is a lot of what Burnell talks about, that connection piece, is part of my four-part framework that is included in my newly released book, Influencer Entrepreneurs. If you haven't gotten your copy yet, I would so appreciate it and thank all those who have already supported me by purchasing the book, but you're definitely going to want to grab that. We're going to link to that in the show notes that you can get your own copy of Influencer Entrepreneurs. All right, let's dive into personal branding with Burnell Westbrook right now. Hi, Burnell. How are you? Good. How are you? Very good. I am so excited to have you on the podcast. You and I actually met for the first time right before this huge pandemic broke out. I think that was the last time I was actually like out of my house was at that event. So I am so excited to get to talk to you. Will you introduce yourself and your business? Yes. So I am Brunel Westbrook and I'm the owner of Branded by Brunel. We are a Charlotte-based design company. We specialize in branding and web design. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to talk about what is personal branding, which I'm really excited about because I feel like more and more people are starting to understand that it's not just about having a website. It's also about branding yourself. So before we dive into it, what is personal branding? Like how would you define it? Yes. So I would define personal branding as the experience that your clients have anytime they connect with you, period. Good. So what are the steps to take to build a personal brand? Yes. So there are four key pillars to building a personal brand. That is your voice, your values, your vision, and then ultimately your visuals, because we all like things that are aesthetically pleasing. Okay. Will you walk me through what you mean by those four? Like talk to me first about voice. That was the first one you said. Yes. So your brand voice is, it should be unique to you. It is how you connect with people. It's your, ultimately your story. So with your brand voice, one of the suggestions that I give to my clients is to record themselves talking about their business. Record yourself talking about your process, your story, and what problems you solve for people. And then listen to that. You can clean it up as you write it. Um, But that is your unique voice. That's your brand position. So that's what I mean by voice. Okay. And the other three pillars that you have, will you go through all those other three as well and kind of defining them? Yes. So your vision. So that is the framework um, of what your brand is. So that's more so with goal setting and mindset when I use the word framework, when I use the word vision. Um, So some of the questions to help you identify that are who is your target client? Who, what needs do they have? What's the big thought you want to leave people with? And then how you plan to convey that to the world. So that's your brand vision. And then your brand visuals Those are usually the things that people are excited about. So you have your logo, your color scheme, your typography, and then also your brand photography. And I think we're going to touch on that a little bit more as we go. And then the fourth one is your values. So core values are huge in your business. So that's what you stand for. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. So you want that to come across what values you have. I love that. And I think too, like... 
a lot of times when people think of branding, I think they immediately immediately jump to visuals, right? Like they just think it's my logo, it's my color scheme, it's the font that I'm going to use when it's actually so much more. And that so much more that you give is that connection piece yeah. that you're talking about with your voice. And also um, just really, you're, I love that you bring in values because I think the values are just so important and it let those that have similar values yeah be attracted to you. Exactly. It gives some people a basis to have something that will resonate with them. And that's so powerful. So I tell people a lot of times your personal values, they trickle into your business values. So that's really key in your personal brand. I think when I saw you speak at, it was a Tuesdays Together event that we were at, you actually asked about what your values were. And yeah. you were, call, I think I got called on for that. And I was like, kind of like ducking my head. Um, but yeah, I think knowing those values. So what would you say your values are when it comes to that for your personal brand? Yes. So one of my biggest core values is authenticity. And I hear that word used a lot now as kind of a buzzword. But what that means for me is that I want not only my client's experience with me to be authentic, but also the experience that they share with their clients. Um, So the key to that is really knowing your story and kind of honing in on your superpowers. What are the things that you're really good at that you can share with your clients Um, and really kind of staying away from the cliches. So authenticity is a big one for me. That is great. And yeah, and I think, I think when I was at the event and you asked about values, I talked about trustworthiness. And I think my added one that I didn't think of at that time, but it's definitely about being inclusive and including everyone and making everyone feel comfortable. I always not liked where people feel clicky. I want everyone to feel like they're part of the community and can provide something of value to everyone that's there. So I love that you put all in the values because I think that's just a huge piece of what we need to have. It is. And you're doing an excellent job with that, Jenny. I listen to your podcast and I definitely see how inclusivity, not only um, across people, but just the industries, how you bring different industries together. So I see that core value reflected in your business. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, What are some personal brand, uh, personal branding examples you could give from like your experiences? Yes. Um, So I work with a lot of photographers And so the biggest thing with photographers are people are like asking the question, how do I stand out? It seems like a saturated industry. Um, So with personal branding of photographers, I tell them to tell me how you want your clients to feel. Let's start there and work backwards. So for example, if you are a family photographer or a wedding photographer, no doubt one of the biggest feelings is you want people to feel comfortable. So really showing that on your website, in your voice, using language that talks about how you will ease that stress or how you will help them walk them through adding pieces of value to the experience and even educational pieces to let them know that like you're not alone here. So that's a huge piece for photographers. Um, Also with personal branding, I work a lot with wellness coaches, um, people who are like therapists and and counselors and things of that nature. And so for them, the trustworthiness factor of their core values really sticks out because people are coming from a very vulnerable standpoint when they talk to them. So just making sure through their brands that we're showing people that they're trustworthy, um, that they're really going to help them and, and guide them through that tough period. So, yeah. I love the way that you talked about it coming through in the language that they use, because going back to the photographer example that you gave, I think that for me, like when I was trying to find a branding photographer for just myself, um, it was really important that I found someone that was kind of quirky that was going to make me because I'm very uncomfortable in front of the camera when it's just me. Um, so I needed someone that kind of had that quirkiness. And I think one of the things you said that and it like brought me back to that day I was looking for someone. She had like a goofy picture of herself with like her camera um, and just making like a silly face. And that's it was that yeah. comfort level that I needed to know, okay, she's not going to take this ultimately seriously and expect me to like know the poses and be able to like, look be- like Beyonce here. She's right. going to let me be <laughs> my uncomfortable self. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, Do you have a personal brand statement? If so, what is it? Yes. So my personal brand statement is I obsess over the details. So you don't have to. 
And oh so, yeah. and so what that means to me is, um, as a business owner, running a business is hard. Like that is a true struggle for people. And so a lot of times they're having to look at the big picture, but when you come to me, I obsess over the small details. I, I scrutinize the wording and I look for the perfect color palette, the perfect typography to get your message across. So by that being my personal brand statement, it kind of, it gives my clients a, a comfortable place to start, basically, knowing that I'm going to take that off of their plate. <laughs> yes. No, I love that. And I, it's almost like I think a lot of bloggers that are probably listening are going, okay, how can I get a personal brand statement? But it's like your tagline. What are you expected to be known yes. for? Um, I know I have one client that is a vegan food blogger that has a tendency for people to think of it. It's all going to be healthy. Everything's got to be, you know, the right amount, the perfect food. Um, but her tagline involves with a side of fries so that, you know, you're also going to get in that level of comfort and you, right. it's about having a balance for yourself of what you need, especially in times when you're in the middle of a quarantine, you need to eat that bag of chips, go eat those bag of chips. Yeah. <laughs> definitely definitely and I love that you use the word tagline because this personal brand statement can be your tagline especially if your brand is first is a personal brand so yes and I think even if your brand is you know that food blogger or if it is that DIY home decor um that you're known for having like that website adding in the personal branding, I think gives that added level of connection that people are going to want to come back to. It's that authenticity piece that you tie in. Um, and I think especially right now on Instagram, like Instagram is very much about personal brand. It's not really about that website, that blog. It's about show me the behind the scenes so I can connect with you and know that even though your house looks like it's perfectly clean, it's not <laughs> right. exactly. It humanizes you. It definitely. Say that again. I'm sorry. I said it humanizes you. Humans connect with other humans, and so once they know that, hey, she's a real person. Her house gets dirty. Sometimes she eats fries. Um, sometimes she's not completely polished. Once they know that, then they can relate to you. And when people can relate to you, then they can trust you. So that's very important. Yeah. No, it's so, so very true. So how can we tie our photos into our brand? Like, what are the best ways you think to do that? Yes. So by bringing in some of those personal elements, I think that's huge as well as bringing in the visuals. So having your color scheme, very cohesive, that takes us back to that style guide mood board process that everybody does before they create their logo, bring that to your branding photo shoot. Um, And then also when choosing a brand photographer, choose someone that shows your style, honestly, that you can, you will feel comfortable in front of their camera. And so that's huge. So my tips for branding photography is take props, take things that you're comfortable having, um, wearing your color scheme, as we mentioned, and then bring things that have your visuals on them. So if you have a mug with your logo or pins with your logo, um, because it's those little subtle touches that help with brand recognition. So good. And I think it's ways to kind of like the things that you're talking about are easy enough for people to do. And I think too, a lot of times people will think headshots over branding photos. Do you have a preference? Like what would you recommend to a client to do headshots over like a branded photo shoot? So when I ask my clients for photos for their website, I ask for both and I break it down into like a rule of thirds formula. So 30% like headshots, more of those business type photos. I say 30% of personal photos. I want to see your personality. If you have a big personality and you love to laugh, send me some photos be laughing. And then that final 30% are things that have your promotional materials in them. So those are the photos that are designed to sell. Those are the photos that kind of have a strategy behind them. Okay. I love that. And I think too, like uh, for me, I guess there's a difference between a headshot where it's like white background or blue background, you know, like you're posing and that's all you're doing. Whereas compared to like the lifestyle kind of branded photos where you're at a desk, you're in front of your planner, you're on your cell phone showing like, that's how you, you know, communicate with clients, whatever it might be. Exactly. Exactly. 
And I think those branded photo shoots like that, that are more lifestyle, it lets that personality come out, right? Yeah. Yes, it definitely lets your personality. And then it also gives people something to look forward to of, oh, I can be that model or the model that's in your branding photography with you. Like, wow, she looks like she's having such a good time. That's the experience I want to have when working with her. So it gives, once again, gives people something to resonate with. You really want to build those genuine connections. Awesome. That's perfect. So now, do you have a guide that can kind of walk us through creating a personal brand for ourselves? I do. So it is a freebie download on my website. It's entitled the Branding Fundamental Guide. And there it talks about those four pillars of branding. Um, It has a checklist inside of it. Um, And then it also gives you some actionable steps for the next time you get ready to launch a service or an offering. So it's great. It's free. (laughs) Perfect. We're going to link to that in the show notes so everybody can make sure that they grab onto that and uh, download it, use it, and keep it that checklist right by their side so they know exactly what they need to get on there. And where are the best places to follow along with you? Yes. So my website is brandedbybrunel.com as well as my Instagram account. And my Instagram shows you the not so perfect moments. <laughs> so you'll get to see the behind the scenes, what we're working on. And then it's full of different tips and tricks as well. And that Instagram is branded by Brunel. Okay, perfect. We are going to also link to that in the show notes. And my audience, I always tell them the same thing at the end of the, as part of my outro, but you all know that like when you're listening and you're walking your dog and you want to get, put up a um, screenshot of it on Instagram stories, you can tag both of us and we'll make sure that we come on back over and we can DM and get to know people better and engage with people. So what? for now, I appreciate you so much for taking the time to talk to my audience. I really just think that there's this growing shift that's happening from people going from having a website or having a food blog or having a DIY home decor and it be needing to become more of a personal brand so that they can stand out in stand in their almost in their own. Like they're it just that's how they're going to step forward is in their own uniqueness. So I appreciate you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me today, Jenny. I'm so excited for all of your listeners to hear this. Perfect. Thanks so much. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. You can clearly see that having a personal brand for yourself has become more and more important as we see the internet and blogs and social media presences popping up all over the place with this, of course, coming from this recent pandemic. So, I want you to make sure that you download her free workbook that she offered. We have a link to it in the show notes. Hop over, make sure that you grab that because it's going to really guide you through those four pillars that she walked you through. And as much as we may say we want to hide behind our blog and our website and what it is that we do, that connection piece that you need is in your personal brand. This is also something that I talk about in my new book, Influencer Entrepreneurs. It is part of that four-part framework that I am going to walk you through so that you can really have that connection with your audience and start building your business and growing your income. If you haven't already grabbed your copy, I would so appreciate it if you do. And if you already have it, I appreciate you. As always, if you are listening in, I'd love it if you took a screenshot, put it up on Instagram stories and tag me at Jenny underscore Melrose as well as at Branded by Burnell. All right, guys, until next time, I will talk to you all then. 